Lordy, 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 Lordy. Heedy, 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 hee. I'm not sure why that stuck in my head. That just randomly popped in there. Welcome to Cooperville Live. A very happy Thursday, first day of July. Believe that? How did that happen? Seems like only yesterday we were talking about snow. Yet here we are. Doing all the things summertime is meant for. Like fixing a pool for the 3,476th time. Because that's the kind of dedication you have as a human being. <sighs> yeah. Don't get me started on the pool. I don't want going to work. It's going to work. It's going to be just fine. But okay, we've tried to fix it 4,732 times. And it's going to be god awful hot this weekend too. For the July weekend, America. might have to find ourselves a lake or a reservoir or some sort of body of water in order to make it tolerable because I don't know if that thing is going to survive overnight tonight. Fingers crossed. Hope you're doing well. Big show today. Nashville recording artist Eric Chesser joins us coming up in just a bit. Fresh off of his performance at Country Fest. Rocking that hat uh, last weekend. Going to be awesome. Eric Chesser, live on the program in mere moments. Stand by for that. But first, we thank the lovely people that make this possible. Cooperville Clothing. All those tees, yo. All those tees. You know you need one. You know you want to rock one of those. You know you're feeling it. Maybe you're a lean into the weirdness type of person. Maybe you're lean into the weirdness type of person. I think you need this in your life. Lean into the weirdness. When the weirdness leans into you, you lean in. Check out CooperVilleClothing.com. Men's with stuff, women's stuff, hats. We're going to start a new thing called Snapback Sunday. We're going to release a new Snapback hat every Sunday. We're going to start that after the 4th of July. Because Lord only knows what the weekend has in store. CaptainCoops.com. Beard oils, beard balms, beard butters for your bearded face. If you don't have a bearded face, perhaps you know somebody that could use a little cleaning up. You know, they're a little straggly. Well, this is the stuff for you. Beard oils, we got those balms. Balms are the bomb. That's like that's my, my go-to. So I, I go oil and balm. Those are my two things. And then this is going to sound weird. Uh, I hair dry. Yeah, turn the heat on that stuff. And it's just marvelous. This is a full day's worth of, well, <laughs> stress. But So check out CaptainCoops.com. For the July sale continues through Sunday as we have 10% off all of those oils, balms, and butters. That goes on um, until Sunday. The code is FREEDOM10 at checkout. What's going on, Mama Joe? Uh, I got your email. We're going to get Ben on the show. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the connections. Uh, FREEDOM10 is the promo code at uh, CaptainCoops.com for your beard uh, pleasures. And of course, Midwest Meals, those healthy meals that you need on the go or just for every day. We order them up. We get our order in by Friday. They ship it out on Monday nationwide at 16 signature meals, as it says right there, obviously on the screen. And you can get uh, get the good stuff. All your macros so you know like, okay, how much protein am I getting in this? How much, how much fat am I getting in this? How many carbs? All the things that you need to know if you're doing that kind of macro counting, which you, you should be doing. MidwestMeals.com at checkout, use the promo code COOPER, and you get 10% off of your uh, first order, which is pretty slick. So it really it really takes off the pressure. If you're like a meal prepper, which I used to be, like Sunday was the day for meal prep. Like you go in and you make like a bunch of chicken and a bunch of rice, and then you just had your meals for the week. That's how you stay so svelte, you know? That's how you stay svelte. Um, but this like takes the thinking out of it. You just go in and you're like, oh, I would like to try the... Mediterranean meal, or perhaps you want the peanut butter overnight oats with the strawberries, or you want to have, you know, the lean turkey tacos. Whatever you need, MidwestMeals.com has got you taken care of. They do. Promise you. So check those all out. CooperVilleClothing.com, CaptainCoops.com, MidwestMeals, 
and of course, Monster Energy. They keep me from sleeping because this right sleep is overrated. I did realize, though, I realized over the course of Country Fest that really I can quote end quote survive on about three hours. And not like a good solid three hours, like that really shitty three hours of sleep. Like it's loud, you're tossing and turning, sleeping on a bed that's not yours. You probably messed with Jack Daniels the night before. Yeah, made it, survived. Made it through TR at the end of uh, Saturday night, so I feel good about life. But uh, one of the great things, and uh, you heard me talk about this when we came back and did the, uh, the recap show on Monday, is um, getting to introduce the first act of Country Fest was, uh, was fantastic for m- multiple reasons. I was hanging out backstage waiting, and I'm like, I bet that's Eric Chesser. And I'm like, I'm just going to go over and say hi. I'm fearless. I'd only had two beers at that time, so imagine. But also the moment that you realize that you have brought live music back to the Festival Grounds in Kadat and, and really the first major music festival in the Midwest, that was Country Fest, and, uh, and Eric having to be the, the first person to take over the stage, and, and he got to play again the next day. It was uh, super cool to meet him, and I'm like, hey, I think we should have you on the show. And it only took a little bit of, of convincing, a little coaxing. It twisted his arm a little bit, but, uh, but he is on the show. Eric Chesser, how you doing, my friend? Hey, good. How you doing? I'm doing well. You had a full weekend, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, like you said, we definitely uh, had a good time uh, with some Jack Daniels and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and kicking off live music again. It was so much fun to be back at Country Fest. You know, that's not only is it is it great to be back there, and if, if we had a year that we would have had a consecutive year, it would have been great to be back there, but you have that year off. And so you feel like you have to go, like, you got to, kick it into a different gear because it's the first one back in such a long time. I feel like I accomplished that over the course of uh, four days that I was there. Oh yeah. You, uh, you kicked it off. Great. Um, we appreciate you got uh, MC and us getting going out there at kickoff party before Kentucky headhunters and Neil mm-hmm. McCoy. That was just a, such a great feeling uh, backstage, just getting ready to get back out mm-hmm. there talking to the band and, you know, the past year, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Didn't know when this was going to happen. And we all just agreed, you know, never taking a show for granted ever again. And there's no, not that I ever did, but I always love, you know, every show I love playing. But um, uh, there's no better feeling than being out there and playing live music in front of, you know, country music fans, especially. It's just a great feeling. Yeah. And I mean, you had a full weekend because then you were back the next day on on Maine and then you did another show and then you left and then you had another show. I mean, you this was like you got back into it and you went in just full throttle, man. Well, so yeah, we were around Thursday, but we were just hanging out. It felt like we were, you know, had playing a show because yeah. we were just, we love watching, you know, when we're not playing, you know, I've, I've told this during, uh, you know, concerts before, you know, I love going out to, you know, to concerts, country music, you know, uh, concerts, especially, and to seeing other artists do, you know, perform. And, um, it's just a lot of fun to, you know, to be part of it. And, um, you know, it was cool to have that one day to kind of hang out and be mm-hmm. part of it until we played the next day on Friday as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, I saw a lot of pictures of you popping up on my on my uh, my Facebook feed. I was like, he's making his, he's <laughs> saying hi to the people. He's saying hi to the folks yeah. while he's out there. Oh man, we love it. That's you know, country music fans and the fans that come out to Country Fest, they make it what it is. And it was really cool to uh, stop by Radio Row, say hi to those guys, and um, and then the you know, fans kind of just started seeing us hanging around, and you know, they brought up some apple pie moonshine and some <laughs> you know different drinks and that, and it's just great to get to meet you know new people. That's part of it too, not just getting up there and playing. It's the the relationships you build, uh, especially in country music, you know, with the fans and uh, with radio and mm. um, you know different songwriters and just in general, it's just a, it's a community that I love being part of, and we're very thankful. Country music is great for that, especially for an artist when you go out and you meet fans that they're, you know, they're like, hey, it's like it's cool. Let's grab a picture. And somehow some sort of weird liquor comes out. They're like, hey, <laughs> you got to try this. Like, I'm not sure if you have anything to do for the rest of the day, but you got to try our apple pie moonshine. Yeah, they said they snuck it into the festival. <laughs> uh, won't say names so no one gets yeah. in trouble, but uh, they gave us a whole water bottle to go home with. And um, definitely, uh, it was good. It was smooth. Yeah. I was feeling it. Yeah, I hear you, man. Did I see? Did I see you got a chance to uh, to get a, a photo op with Dirks? Yeah, that was uh, first time getting to meet him. Um, you know, I'm kind of you know backstage. If if it's an opportunity where 
it just kind of works out. It works out. I'm not one to just kind of go up to people. And, uh, um, but he's, you know, I looked up to, you know, I look up to him. I've been listening to his music for so long and, um, you know, the opportunity was, you know, we just were kind of walking by each other and I just thought to introduce myself and just how appreciative I am for, you know, all he's done for country music. Uh, it's an honor to, it was an honor to meet him and, and all the things that he does for, you know, other folks, you know, um, you know, of course, I think everyone saw the store with Bailey and, uh, and, uh, you know, during the pandemic, he was, he partnered up, I think with flag and Anthem with the, you know, pizza for the pandemic, helping out with the healthcare workers, you know, selling those t-shirts that help support those people. And so it was just, uh, you know, it was surreal getting to meet him. Um, I kind of told him a story uh, when I was in, uh, you know, before I, really pursued my career in country music. I was actually in law school Mm -hmm. and uh, one of my good friends, Margaret, uh, we'd go out to, you know, this one dive bar on the weekends, all of us, you know, group of friends did and, uh, and tip it on back would come on. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) at this point, at at this point in the night, you know, we've definitely been feeling it. um, And it's getting kind of later in the evening, you know, for uh, last call and uh, tipping on back would come. And one of the lines is there, you know, says sip a little more than you know, you should. And, Mm. You know, my friend Mark, she knows like lyric, she knows she can recite any lyric to songs and me, you know, sometimes I'll just like, you know, hear a song, I'll start making up stuff, whatever. And, <laughs> and, uh, so I said, tip a little more than, you know, you should like tip your bartenders. And so I just wanted to, I don't know, I knew in the moment, like, you know, she would be like going crazy right now, mm-hmm. knowing that, you know, I got to meet Dirks. And, uh, so I shared that story with them and, uh, he said, oh, we don't, we don't have that one in the set list. And I don't think, you know, my buddy, Johnny, who's our guitar player in the yeah. band, He's like, you know, he, he kind of was thinking maybe they should have added because at the moment I was like, oh, no, don't worry about adding to the don't add to your set list. It's all good. I just hey, actually wanted to share, I have a pen. Just wanted to share. Yeah, I just wanted to share the story. But um, that's cool. No, it was really cool to meet him. And also, uh, you know, got to meet uh, Neil McCoy yeah. on, at the kickoff party. Uh, you know, what a super nice guy. Uh, you know, got to talk with him during sound check for about an hour. You know, it, it was just it was unbelievable getting the chance to meet him and. Yeah. Um, just the words of encouragement from him and, uh, it, you know, it's just such a class act, you know, just, it was, it was awesome to be able to open up for Kentucky headhunters and him yeah. and, um, you know, just really appreciative of the opportunity to do that. You know, Neil McCoy is one of those, one of those guys in, uh, in, not just in country music, but I think in music in general, we were down in the office, uh, and uh, going over some final stuff before anything, even before the gates open anything. So we're down there and, you know, I'm talking to the people in the office and we're working on some some scripts and stuff, <clears throat> excuse me. And then Neil McCoy walks in and he's like, hello, y'all. I just want to let you know I'm running for uh, PTA uh, District 9 and vote Neil. And then, he was, then it was like something else. He's like, I'm also running for uh, uh, <laughs> student council president uh, in District 14. I mean, and just a genuinely great human being uh, to just be so you know accommodating to everybody. But I did see, so as we introduced you um, on that first day, Wednesday night for the kickoff party, um, Neil McCoy was standing side stage watching your set. Like I'm like, hey, that's cool. Like, you just like was before you guys even cranked it up. He was like, ah, oh, it's right by the soundboard. Just uh, you know, yeah, was, elbows up, just keeping an eyeball out on you. That was I heard that, and you know that's awesome. You know, it was just really cool. Yeah, he, he actually, yeah, he did mention he, he saw he listened to a few, a few songs, and just you know, like I said, he's just a great guy, yeah. and um, just it was a uh, an unbelievable you know, weekend being there at country fest, uh, we, you know, we were there in 219, uh, for the first time. And, um, you know, we were super thankful to be there that year and to be invited back. We're very, you know, can't say enough thanks to, to Wade and everybody at country fest and Dawn and, and Bev and everybody, part of the staff, they just do such a great job of, you know, making sure everyone, you know, has anything that they need and, um, you know, just so welcoming and, we just love every minute of it. We'd play there every year if we could. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wade, Wade, if you're watching, if you're one of the people watching, uh, Eric wants to be back on it. Let's get him back. Was, when you're, at- I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep up with Neil. You know, Neil <laughs> thinks no, I'm no kidding, right? yeah. double digits being there. So <laughs> like, oh, just come back. It just, it, he probably yeah. has his own like permanent building out there somewhere. He's like, yeah, that's Neil's uh, quarters back yeah. there. Yeah, right. Oh, so when you're at, you know. You know, a festival like Country Fest or you know any kind of show where you get to, a chance to play around other artists and stuff, uh, outside of absorbing like the things you talked about, when you, it's great to be out with fans and it's great to kind of just be in that environment as a country music fan. But are you also kind of absorbing different 
nuanceical things about different artists and kind of things that they're doing and, you know, just kind of learning as you are a part of these kind of big, you know, major things? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think you have to always try to improve no matter what you're doing, if you're in music or whatever your career may be. Um, you know, if you can pick up new things that you may want to experiment with up on stage, mm. uh, it could be just pointing to the crowd or something. It could be a stage movement or, um, you know, I think it's always important to try to improve your craft yeah. and just to be the best that you can at what, whatever you're doing. So you're kind of like this whole multiverse. Uh, you could really go off and do anything. I know you were uh, were an athlete in high school. I believe football was uh, was the the sport. Oh, was it, what, what basketball, 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 basketball. My height, was six five. Yeah, that's right. I, I was I was gonna. That's gonna be my question. I'm like, why don't you play hoops? But so you're obviously an athlete, uh, and you go off and you get your MBA and your law degree, and then you're like, you know, music's good. I'm gonna go that way. Like. What, what was it that what was that moment that you pursued? I know you started as young in music, like started playing young and it was kind of introduced to you very early in your life. But like, what was the decision when you're like, yeah, this law thing is great, but I'm going to go ahead and full on go with uh, with music. Yeah. So, uh, you know, growing up, um, sports and music were, you know, my two loves. You know, I just loved playing all sports growing up. Uh, basketball just happened to be the one to, you know, I could pursue it in college and have those opportunities to play. And, um, it was actually kind of after, you know, my college basketball days and I was able to, you know, I went to law school. My, my parents were pretty uh, supportive of just, you know, always encouraging my older sister and I to, you know, go get your education first before, you know, pursuing your, you know, your dreams. And, um, but behind the scenes from basketball days, you know, from growing up, you know, cause I started my dad and my grandpa, they both, you know, played guitar. They got me in a, at a young age and, um, and it, that was kind of always my escape. Like, so I'd be school practice and before, you know, homework or go to bed, like I'd pick up the guitar and just, you know, strum a few chords, you know, kind of, you know, just learn some songs. And then during college, I took a few guitar lessons. Uh, I was actually at a junior college. Um, and I took like a, there was a class that you could take guitar lessons and, and so I was like, man, that sounds like an awesome class. Why don't I, do that? <laughs> I like this. Yeah. And so, um, and then when I finished up with my master's and I was in law school, you know, I really had a lot of extra time there where I, you know, started to, taking vocal lessons and, uh, and I continued to practice guitar. And, and I just always knew like, you know, that was kind of my escape and, and I, that was where I was most happy to, you know, is playing music. And I wanted to turn the escape into reality. And, um, you know, so I knew as soon as I got done, you know, first getting that, my degrees out of the way that this was something that, you know, I wanted to just really go into and pursue. And I'm very fortunate with all the opportunities and the support that we've had so far with our music and country radio and, mm -hmm. and the opportunities to play at great festivals like country fest. Yeah. And you talked about, you know, uh, family influences uh, in getting you into music and picking up the guitar for the first time, but like musically, who was, who were the artists that really kind of sparked that, you know, it, it's one thing to enjoy music and to know how to play the guitar. It's another thing to be like, yeah, this, this just resonates. It's something that I, I need to go after. Were those, those artists in your, uh, in your spectrum as you uh, kind of pursued going into music full time? Um, you know, I listened to all different kinds of music growing mm -hmm. up. Um, but definitely, uh, I think when I was, uh, you, you know, early teens, kind of, you know, I started, you know, tuning into like, our hometown country station in the Plainfield. I'm, I'm from Plainfield, Illinois, originally. And, uh, um, you know, so that which is about 45 minutes from outside of Chicago. So I had a, you know, variety of music we listened to, but I tuned in and I, you know, it was Kenny Chesney, um, you know, I think it was Young or Big Star. One of those songs were just like that upbeat, you know, country where it just picks you up and, and then obviously like Brooks and Dunn, Red Dirt Road and, uh, you know, just so many, you know, Luke Bryan, you know, all the, you know, there's just so many great Tim McGraw, George yeah. Strait, all those guys are just, you know, so inspiring. Dirk Bentley. Um, so, but of course, you know, I listen to other music too. Like one of my favorite concerts I've ever been to was going with my dad to see the Rolling Stones at Soldier mm -hmm. Field. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. Uh, seeing Elton John perform, mm -hmm. um, never seen the Eagles, but the Eagles obviously are great. Yeah. Uh, so just a lot of musical influences and, uh, but for country, yeah, definitely Kenny, uh, Tim McGraw, um, you know, those guys I grew up listening to. And, uh, I think that's what's so like, what's cool about country music is the songwriting and, 
um, being able to, you know, hear, hear or tell a story and you could have the worst day in the world, but when you tune out, you know, tune into country radio or, uh, you know, play on your playlist, whatever it may be today, but, um, you know, your day could just get picked right back up, right. you know, it's just inspiring. And yeah. so that's that really, I gravitated towards country music for that reason. And, uh, and I hope our music continues to, you know, inspire people as we, you know, write and, and grow and, uh, and yeah, that's yeah. kind of how I got into it. There's an authenticity to country that I think really resonates with people because it, there's a connection on a different level. You know, you talked about it can raise you up if you're feeling down. I mean, it, it really has the, the capabilities of taking you on this journey of kind of this up down. There's there's a, a playlist that can take you if you're having a pool party out back and you want like, you know, when Kenny went from, you know, big star to dude, I'm just going to be an, the island guy. I'm like, you know, he's like mini, uh, <laughs> yeah. mini Jimmy Buffett. I'm like. Dude, good choice. Good good life choice, especially from two kids that come from the Midwest. We're like, hmm, that seems like a good idea. But it can like it can be the soundtrack to any emotion that you're going through. It can be, you know, something that you like totally relatable. I think that's the big thing about country. And that's why you see the fans get so I mean, you saw we saw people on Saturday standing in the rain for eight hours. Just like and wow. in it, like not moving. They like no poncho. I mean, probably Jack Daniels, Crazy. but no poncho. <laughs> you know, they didn't care. They were just, they were so into it and, and all those different genres. I mean, on Saturday we had uh, Confederate railroad was out there, you know, you had uh coal and you had TR and all these, you know, so you have all this different stuff that's coming out, you know, red Akins and people were just like in it and it took them on this roller coaster ride. And that connection between the fans and the artist, you know, is something I think you, I mean, especially with, you know, your new song date night, that's that like relatable, like, Oh, uh, Oh Yeah. Like I get it, I, I get it. I'm, I'm, in, I'm feeling that. But there's that that bond between artist and uh, and fan when it comes to country music that's really unparalleled. I don't think in any other genre. Absolutely, and that's something I kind of keep in mind when I'm writing songs. Is you know, it's not just you know, some of it's a, a bit personal, but it's also you know, I want to relate to real life experiences that other people can relate to as well. And um, and date night definitely is one of them. Uh, yeah. You know, that that was the thing, you know, last year, obviously, we weren't really able to play shows. And, you know, we just finished, you know, recording that one for uh, we were just getting out of the studio and the thing like, man, people can't really go on date nights right now. But <laughs> Zoom want to put out but we want to put out new music. Right. And and we did. And, um, you know, it's done really well with streaming and country radio. We were, you know, very thankful for that. And, um, but now being able to go out there and play it live, it's just a whole nother feeling. It's great to, you know, to be able to promote it kind of all over again. Um, now that we're, you know, playing it live in, in concert. What's your songwriting process? Like, are you like a, a scheduled guy? Are you like when it hits you, you know, what's, what's, what's the flow with when you're needing to put pen to paper or, or type it out on an iPad, whatever your, you know, whatever your jam is. Yeah. You know, I think I, uh, yeah, I, Get, I think I get more ideas in the morning yeah. and, uh, and, uh, you know, I'll come up with kind of a concept and, um, you know, it really all depends. If I'm near a guitar, I'll definitely pick up the guitar and see yeah. if I can, you know, get a little melody going or, um, you know, play along to it, or I just grab my, like my phone and, and have the recording, you know, option up there. And maybe I'll hum, it might be the melody before the words. It, it just kind of, uh, it's kind of all over the place, but, um, yeah, I think usually the the concept will come first, the lyrics will come first, and then the music will come uh, afterwards. Not usually. Yeah. Uh, I know you've had. And a... for this song, oh, go ahead. yeah, and and then for this song, you know, date night. Um, so yeah, most of the songs that I put out, I actually have written myself. But um, the the date night I co-wrote uh, with a friend of mine, Marty Lynn Dodson. Uh, she's a great songwriter in Nashville, and so this was kind of a the uh, it was a cool opportunity to work um, for this song. And I brought this, you know, the concept of date night and, but also to get a female perspective on, yeah. on date night. That was, I think what made it into the song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we turned it in from just, you know, let's get excited for a date night to, to this whole other meaning of, you know, yeah, there's life gets us really busy and yeah. whether in our relationship or with friends or family, we got to make time for each other. Mm. And, uh, and so, yeah, kind of, uh, blossomed into into what it is and i'm you know super excited for the song super smart by the way getting woman's perspective I'm like, <laughs> yeah so just you know i'm saying from firsthand experience it's been good to probably get their two cents you know because sometimes we have different visions definitely 
definitely. Uh, but you know, being back out and uh, and doing shows, I mean, I checked out the tour schedule. Looks like you got some dates rolling through July and then into August and stuff. Like, are you? Do you feel like the time off? And I don't call. I mean, I know it wasn't time off, but the time, the break, that you obviously sure. took the time to probably put pen to paper and and pursue other things and hone in on your craft. And but do you feel like it's like a launching pad now? Like. It's time. It's go. There's gas in the tank now. The live shows have started back up. You got songs behind you. Do you, f- you feeling good about where you're at here in uh, July 1st of 2021? There's definitely a really good energy right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, coming off of you know this past weekend, it definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we got Fourth of July coming up. Uh, really excited for this show because we're in our my hometown area, Naperville, Illinois. Yeah. I grew up in Plainfield, but Naperville's right next door and. Um, actually graduated from a high school in, in Naperville, uh, Nico Valley. And um, so being able to come back to a hometown crowd for uh, 4th of July, and it's all to help support veterans That's and awesome. their families. Uh, it's yeah. called the Naperville Salute. So uh, I'm really looking forward to being part of that, help support the, the organization Naperville Responds, um, that basically that, that the charity is to help support veterans and, mm-hmm. and their families. And it also shows appreciation for all of our active military and uh, first responders. And, and so I'm, I'm excited for that. And, but yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, feeling a lot of great energy. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and I think live, you know, there's nothing better than live music and, and being able to get out there and, um, and it, it goes both ways, you know, because we feed off the crowd's energy mm-hmm. when we're up there. And um, so it's a, it's a special, relationship being able to play loud music and then having the reaction and the great feedback and response from fans that come out no i imagine that's got to be this weekend show sounds like it's going to be a good time like like fun will be had in naperville uh this oh weekend. yeah it feels like they're like for i mean fourth of july like stuff will be blowing up there's probably gonna be some beverages bar the smell of barbecue will be in the air like i, I feel like this is going to be a good time and, and eric chester music playing in the background like life life seems like this is gonna be a good one <laughs> It definitely uh we do have some we have more shows coming up in the summer uh mm-hmm. like you mentioned there uh we're going on to north dakota that's uh i've never been in north dakota so this is going to be a cool experience uh we're playing at a uh, nd country fest with dustin mm-hmm. lynch and john michael montgomery uh leroy parnell and uh i think i'm trying to remember the lineup here julia cole and i think braxton keith so it's going to be nice. a cool lineup there i think uh brantley gilbert's headlining the first night um, Dustin's got the, uh, you know, we're on Saturday night. So whichever night day that is, <laughs> it's a few day event. So we're looking forward to that show. It's, and, uh, we got to see him play a country fest on wow. that day off we had on Thursday and gosh, he put on a great show. That was I mean, that was just, that was so cool how, you know, he pulled up the, the, you know, the person from the audience come up and sing the song. Um, you know, that was just, and then the, the, the couple that got engaged yep. unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable i don't want to give away a show i don't know if that, no, know. that happens all the time or not but that was unbelievable that was, you know? it seemed like that was pretty unique and the fact that she got up and she nailed it and he was like what yeah <laughs> that was yeah, an amazing exactly. reaction it's like man you can sing girl yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's a tough one because you never know <laughs> you never, you never you know, know how that's yeah. gonna go over but no that was yeah. that's gonna be great that dustin lynn show was great and i'm glad you saw it from the same perspective i did as a fan just going yeah, dude's uh, he's he's kind of yeah. got things unlocked these days. He's doing well. Oh, for sure, for awesome, sure. Man. Well, it sounds like a full summer, and I'm guessing uh, you seem like a guy that doesn't hold on to music very long. There's probably going to be something in our ear before the end of the year. You think? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's the thing that's been cool. We've been playing, you know, four of those songs that we played uh, over the weekend were unreleased oh, nice. songs that you know we recorded uh, during. You know, date night's part of that project too, and to hear the the feedback that we've received and just the reaction from some of those songs, it's really cool. So we're gonna have a whole new EP coming out later in the summer, or early nice. fall. Don't have a set date yet, but uh, we'll be announcing all that stuff on social media when that time comes. Actually, just uh, we we're heading. We were in Nashville uh, just this past day, so we shot, shot down here before the show coming up because uh, we're working on a release uh, campaign and things of that nature, just to get everything ready to go and. Um, but we're looking forward to putting out new music. It's always an exciting thing when you're going to release a new music. You just hope for a great response. And, um, especially when you put all that time and energy yeah. into rec- writing and recording it. And, um, and so it's, it's a fun feeling. It's a, it's a good moment. And, and I hope this fall, you know, we, we've done these, uh, annual, so sports, this is kind of where sports comes in too. I put out this song 
it was one of my first songs actually i was still in school when i released it. it's called tailgate hmm. and it's all about uh football you know football season i'm, I'm a bears fan uh, you guys probably won't like that <laughs> well this has been fun i love to say but we have to go. no so i understand no hey that's it's all over. for today guys I, lo- I understand i understand your pain i don't understand your pain yeah. so no yeah <laughs> yeah good. so we wish we wish rogers would just come by you know I, well not well we got fields now but you know before we're yeah. like hey if rogers unhappy you come on down to chicago yeah, that's cool we, we don't we have no idea what's going on right now we're just like okay yeah uh, whatever diva I know, I know, right? Um, so anyways, uh, we've done doing this fall annual uh, tailgate tour uh, the past few years and uh, just playing at different colleges and universities and, you know, from Big Ten to uh, ACC to just, you know, Division three colleges. It really just varies. And each school is just has its own, you know, student, you know, at like a body of fans that come out for these tailgate shows, you get them amped up for the home football game. And, nice. and this past year we were able to start, um, you know, our tailgate nation scholarship giveaway where it's not much, but we give away a $500 scholarship to one student, you know, per uh, tailgate show we play at. And we hope we can grow from there. And, and it's just been a lot of fun seeing the excitement off, of, uh, you know, the, the students that, you know, that win and, you know, when they hear their name getting called, it's just, it's a really cool moment to be part of. And, and we're hoping we can carry that into this fall since we weren't able to do that last year. That's awesome, man. What a, what a great project. I mean, at philanthropist to your uh, ever growing list of things that you do, <laughs> I got a law degree and a basketball and a music career. And I'm also into philanthropy. No, it's, it's cool stuff, man. I was reading a little bit about that. And I think that's, you know, that's a cool part about being able to, the give back part is that moment that you talked about when you, that, that family, exactly. you know, you went to college, you understand like, Yep. You say 500 bucks is a much. They go, thank you, Eric Chesser. Thank you so very much. You know, I can now do X, Y, and Z. This helped me get through X, Y, and Z. So that's, I think that's very cool. Now, people want to learn more about you and stuff. I know you're on the socials uh, at Eric Chesser, but uh, website's uh, ericchesser.com as well, correct? Yep, that's right. Yep, ericchesser.com. Instagram at Eric Chesser. Uh, Facebook, Eric Chesser Music. I had a lot of people come up. There's another Eric Chesser out there. He's a hunter. And uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm the country music guy, gotcha. um, you know, a, a meet and greets are like, Hey, are you a hunter? I was like, no, I mean, yeah, I like to fish, but you know, I'm not, that's not, I know what Eric Chester you're talking about. That's <laughs> it's not, not me. It's not the guy. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the country music singer. And, uh, um, but, and then Twitter at, uh, at Eric Chester one. So, um, I think we're on, I'm on TikTok. I, I haven't gotten really active on TikTok yet, yeah. but we'll, we'll definitely, uh, probably start, you know, getting more active on that just because it seems to be a, a trendy platform and, um, all the kids are doing is, it, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're getting, we're getting there, you know, just dipping our toes in the water, see how it feels, you know, awesome, man. and <laughs> that's, I, I'm the same way. I'm, I was reading some article about is, you know, I have a couple of different companies and, uh, and do a bunch of different things and like, well, you really should be on TikTok. I'm like, I don't know. I don't have, I see, I'm like, I don't know if I have yeah. moves like Jagger. You know I don't have saying? moves. No, I don't, I got you know, <laughs> it's gonna be me talking about stuff it'll be good but it was so good to uh to meet you at fest and to be able to catch the shows and uh and uh, to get you on this show to be able to chat it up and and hear your story and stuff man I, I appreciate the time and i got i got i got good feelings about where you're going with this thing and uh, i hope we can get you back on the show sometime maybe in august or late when the when the ep is coming out we'll talk more and it'll be football season so we'll have a better perspective about life and where things are going in that yeah. direction yeah, definitely. I appreciate you having me on and uh, it was great to meet you and, uh, you know, very thankful for, uh, you know, everything that you and everyone at Country Fest did for us this past weekend and, and the fans that came out. It was so much fun and, and we hope we can, we'll be back, uh, you know, if not next year, definitely in the future. No, we hope so. Sometime very soon. Eric Chester, take care of yourself, my friend, and uh, stay in touch. Thanks so much, Cooper. Appreciate awesome, it. Good to brother. see you again. Take care of yourself. There we go. Eric Chester, Nashville recording artist on the program, ericchester.com. Eric Chester on Instagram, Eric Chester Music on Facebook, uh, Eric Chester One on Twitter, and then find him on TikTok because uh, if he's gonna st- if he starts, I'll start. That'll be the deal. Y'all good? C Dubs just checked out uh, Eric's music. Yeah, it's lit and it's good stuff. And date night, good thing. I love the female perspective on that. Like ah, now I get it. Now it all makes sense. Uh, thanks to Eric for being on the show. Uh, great conversation and a great time with him uh, at the fest. And if you happen to be watching the program because we are streaming globally, C Dubs is in Malaysia. Uh, make sure you head down to Naperville this weekend and go check out his uh, his show. Sounds like a great time uh, for veterans and stuff like that. So good stuff. Uh, tomorrow on the program, as we kick off into your holiday weekend, this is going to be punny. Huh? Holiday State. 
The trio is back. Holiday State is on the show tomorrow starting at 510. And they'll have a show tomorrow night. So this will be kind of like a, a, a the pregame warm-up to their performance to kick off a 4th of July holiday weekend. So that'll be fun tomorrow at 510 right here on all the platforms that we stream on. Thank you so much. Don't forget, you can support the show at patreon.com slash Cooperville Live. We'll hit the links. And we'll get out of here so you can go enjoy. Thank you, Eric Chess, for being on the program today. No Joe today. Joe started this weekend. I bet he's out enjoying himself. I'm going to go do that myself, I think. I think it is, as a matter of fact, date night. Round cap. We'll get a beer and a pretzel and listen to some music somewhere. All right. Let's go. We out of here.